All right, so we're back at the tub. Hey. And we're going to, yeah, say hi. Hi, hi. Danny. <laughs> uh, talk about keeping fish, tropical fish, outside. Uh, and right now we have Corey's in here, right? Yes. Uh, we have still just the first 10 of those 40 to 50 peppered peppered Corydoras. And it took a while uh, to be able to see if they were doing okay in here because it, it's still a little cloudy. Uh, but now that it's been getting consistently nice and sunny, uh, and today uh, we've seen them up, up here playing around at the surface. So. Yeah, so we're going to drop some food in here. Now I'll, I have some fish to throw in here as well. But we want to see if we can see the Corydoras first. All right, so I know what your answer is going to be, but what's been the biggest challenge so far of keeping tropical fish outside? Um, I would say our climate and the fact that this year has been unreasonably, we had a very long <laughs> spring, cold. cold, all the way up until I would say July. Um, so we only, you know, I had to keep fish in the fish room longer than I planned and that held things up a bit. And then keeping them out here, it's like you just sometimes lose a little sleep when it's super cold out. I know Bob has been out there filling his tanks with <laughs> hot water hoses. Yep, trying um, to save my rainbows, and gosh. I did. And, but I think, you know, it's finally, it's been nice and warm, and which has allowed me to kind of see their, you know, they're coming up to the surface more, there's more activity, starting to see some fry in the and other I know tubs. You get a lot of, I know you've asked me a lot of questions as far as, you know, how to keep fish out here. Mm -hmm. And really, it's no different than an aquarium, and I think that's the way to look at it. Right, yeah. I would say, if anything, these are the most low maintenance of all of my my tubs and tanks that I have. And right now, set up, I think I've got about 30-ish. So it's nice, um, but they're also my largest water volume. So that's helpful as well. Lots of plants, lots of you know, root systems in there, sucking up any nitrates and ammonia. So, um, but they- And definitely the larger, the better. You're gonna have way less temperature swings. Yes, that's that's where I really wanted big tanks if I was gonna do this because where we're from, it's just, it's gonna happen. And so we were really careful and we went back and forth over a lot of fish as to what we were gonna put out here in the tubs because we want we don't want to experiment you know we want them to be which we are going to kind of experiment a little well, bit we're experimenting now <laughs> that the temperature is right now that it's time for that particular species to come outside and they're already ready <laughs> yeah they're, they're over there dancing around and of course one other thing we could do is build like a planter box around this yes i, I need to get another load of wood chips in here to kind of level everything and then we can build some boxes and we still have a couple tubs that we need to oh, situate more. and get set up. All right, let's get these fish in. We're doing a little temperature check. I checked at about 1230 and it was, yeah, it's holding about the same temperature, um, but it's running anywhere from the low 70s to the high 70s. And we've had, you know, 90 degree weather. So it's holding good temperature. It's not getting too hot and it's not swinging too low. And these are yellow rainbows. They can go down, down to like the upper 60s. So we should be pretty good, especially Perfect. with two feet of water. If it does get cold, they'll right. just go to the bottom. And we've got at least another, I'd say, month or two, two months at least uh, of good I think weather. I think we're going to go into like late October. Indian summer. Yeah, we, we've got a late start. So fingers crossed. I'm going to let you dump these in okay. so I can film them. Let me put this down. And uh, we should be good to go. Are we good to just dump it? This Don't dump it. I know. <laughs> it looks like you're ready to just toss the whole thing in. <laughs> be free. <laughs> Welcome to the wild. Um, no, are, are we adding this water in here? Yeah, it's okay. all good. It's there's our that's mostly pond water, anyways. Okay. I know they're all all acclimated at your place. These are all the yellow rainbows that were for sale on my site. So it says I have zero inventory. This is why. But hopefully, hopefully come fall. There they go. These little cheese balls. We'll have hundreds of them. <laughs> and this is kind of the idea of putting fish outside is because they'll just reproduce naturally. Yeah, if, if you guys have seen the guppy videos that Bob put out a couple months ago, you know, we, we had the blue Moscow guppies and the panda guppies. It's already eating. Oh, yay. Yeah, going after the granules. Let me throw some more. I don't know if the... But I was not getting success in the fish room getting the panda guppies to produce fry. Yeah. 
um, the blue Moscows have been just going gangbusters in there. But once I moved the pandas outside, they have just been dropping fry ever since. Ooh, Cory. Ooh, Cory door. So that makes me feel good. That's one of the biggest challenges, like you said, you know, in keeping fish outside is... You Especially know, on something bigger like this where you just can't come out and look. Right. Like an aquarium. Like, oh, my fish are still alive. I, I have no idea if they're alive. I have no viewing panels, you know. it's And in the smaller tubs, it's almost completely covered with plants at this point. So it's more of a just kind of keep the good water coming. And if we don't get rain, I add a little from the hose. But, you know, for the yeah, most so I part... Really, I really wanted to make a video on on like the the trials and tribulations of keeping fish outside but it really just comes down to weather there's really weather it, for me um i drop food you know i do frozen brine shrimp cubes and sinking pellets for this particular tub since it's got the quarries in there and for and a while it was uh, in addition to the live food that's in here in addition to the live because we've seen tons of stuff yeah we get these the snails love to uh walk on surf. water so to speak surf across and lots and lots of tadpoles this year. They're in every tub and every pond I have on the property. So we're going to have lots of frogs this year singing to us. Now I will say that's going to be a downfall for me is what's happening in this other tub over here. Let's go look. With the sun all the time, we get this algae. But this is like the really greasy, like slime algae. Stringy, slimy algae. Yeah, they love it. They hang out in it all the time. All right, so remind me what this little plant is right here. I think it's um, Azola, if that's how you pronounce it. I, It must have came on, you know, came in on one of these pond plants that we put in here, but it just started showing up about a month ago and this, it turns super red with how hot it's been the last couple weeks, but I was super excited. I love add-ons. Yeah, I mean, that's, in my opinion, way better than duckweed. Yeah, ooh, there's some fry. Let me see, I'm gonna throw some food, see if I can get them to come up with this little patch. You know, unfortunately, and fortunately, when you let nature do its thing, you don't get a lot of room to see what's going on down there. So I just kind of keep the good food and the good water coming, yeah. and there's a little baby. And of course, this is a, a joint operation, so all these fry will be available. Yes. Once we, uh, probably, once we collect, there's a once we break right these there. down for the summer, right? So see, they love this algae, so I don't mess with it too much. I tried to clear some so we could see, but right there in front of my finger. Yeah, and like I'm looking over here, and I know the camera's not going to see, but there's tons of little microorganisms swimming around. Yeah, they just so I just kind of let it go for the most part, and that helps when in these because these tubs are smaller; they're 200 gallons less than that big tub you just saw, so. Um, it's going to swing a little bit more than that tub. So these have a lot more cover and therefore keeps it cooler on those hot days. And I know what people are thinking. I've done so many videos about how much I love algae, but it's this specific algae that I don't like. I mean, it's like, you can't even get it off your fingers. Look. Nature. But, but I was cleaning it up and this stuff, this, um, money wart, penny wart, whichever it ended up being in this pot, uh, it's got a ton of roots. So between that, I think that's what kind of holds up the algae over here and they just have lots of food. So hopefully well, we might as well got, check on the other ones while we're here. Yeah, lots and lots of babies come the fall. We haven't seen fry. These are the... Um, oh, you're in the sun. Oh, well, there we go. Now I can see. I haven't seen fry in here yet. These are the uh, white cloud mountain minnows and apparently one, one tetra, tetra of some <laughs> sort is still chilling in there. I did see it the other day, a flash of blue. Um, and I haven't seen fry, but they're super active all over the tub. This would be one of those things where I'm sure if we drained it down, there'd be a billion fry. Yes, there's lots of, um, I did add bottom okay, plants in this particular tub so they've got some stuff back there in the corner to hang out in and these i mean i won't lift it right now to scare them but these water hyacinth roots are hanging down a good six inches or so well that'd be good for rainbows but these are egg scatterers so they're going to plant their eggs on the bottom well there's also um the red cherry shrimp in here Ooh. so they hang out a ton up here in the root system and it keeps them you know from getting predated on. And then the last one here is just sh shrimp. This one is just has um, shrimp, just has orange sh and tadpoles, orange shrimp and tadpoles. And again, the moonwalking snails, but 
This I plan to put the blue Moscow's in, and you know they have been going so gangbusters in their t in their tank in the fish tent that I have just kind of been letting them do their thing. Their first generation of fry is already breeding, and it's very balanced batches that are coming out and love and life. And so I might move some of the more mature uh, of the fry out here that are already breeding and see what they do. But for, the, for now, I'm kind of. I've got room, so to speak. <laughs> so I guess as far as keeping tropical fish outside, just treat it like an aquarium. You still have to cycle it. You still have to cycle it. You know, I drilled the holes out the back. You know, still have filtration. Still have filtration. Still have the plants and the substrate and the rocks and the wood. Um, still add the food, even though they get live food, because breeding fish and fry, they need lots of food. And, and the fish food feeds all the other yeah. organisms. And I just have to, just kind of how I already have to in the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> just watch the weather and pay attention. When I was out of town and- Everywhere, I mean, there's a heat wave on the East Coast right now. Yeah. And there's hurricanes now, so. I was out of town and it got up over 90 degrees here. And I was like, please put a hose in the tubs. You know? <laughs> please check the temperature, oh, feed the fish. So, but other than that, it's been super easy. I haven't done much, just letting kind of nature do its thing. and. Looks like everything I've put out here so far is doing good job. And now we have something to watch for in this tub. I've been yeah. trying to decide forever. And finally, I just said, we're doing yellows. It's warm enough now and it's a big enough volume for them. And that's a bigger school of rainbows that you have. And yeah, I'm excited. And they're one it. of the most popular. So I hope we can get just hundreds of fry. I'll try to take some footage in the morning when I feed them. I'll have to show you yeah. how to use your GoPro. Yes, please. <laughs> Help. See, and now I can already see him swimming around down there. This is going to be awesome. Speaking of swimming around, you want to show him the rosy barbs? I thought you were going to say, speaking of swimming around, do you want to go swimming? Oh, not here. It's hot. It's very hot. But <laughs> I'm not swimming in these tubs. I would. I'd even swim in this one. So this has some of my they were at the surface. goldfish and koi. And then I have a, a really large school of rosy barb males. These are neon rosy neon barbs. Neon rosy barbs. I and think they're, no, they're not long fin. No, these are just the standard. These are beautiful. They have done phenomenal out here since the moment they hit the water. They were super active and um, out at here in the sun, I find that they go, they go more of that rusty orange color and they have a lot of black to them, a lot of black points. It's almost like they got their tan on, <laughs> but, uh, they're, I love them as almost like a dither fish or a schooling fish for the, the goldfish. It helps them actually be more, more active. And I've seen some fry from the goldfish as well. So I got to get these guys now in their own tub with some females, get some ladies for them, get some ladies. And we have an empty tub that yeah, I think is awesome. Tub. And I kind of want to put some pseudomagills in there. This particular tub, I have not really known what to do with. Um, I just ran a hose through it to clear it, clear it up a bit. And we thought about natives. Natives like darters would be really darters. cool. But it's going to get hot so fast for darters. It's a very, the hard part about this particular tub, you know, this is, this is the tub that started my aquarium. <laughs> problem my aquarium hobby hobby not hobby. problem my aquarium passion um this is the one that started it all because it swings in temperature uh so so hard because it's out of the the ground up off the ground up off the ground um so it doesn't have that extra security of being kind of dug down and below the frost zone you know i tried to sell these neon rosy bars last year and didn't sell a single one of them and I just think that's a shame because they are just beautiful. Oh, fish. they're they're one of my favorite. I never thought I would really get into barbs, and I never thought I would get white cloud mountain minnows, and they're two of my favorite <laughs> fish. I love them. They're so hardy. They're so active. They're beautiful. But yeah, this one, uh, it's got a you know, it's going to be limited time. So I feel like now is the time to add something to it because it just swings too much. This stays pretty shaded, so it won't get too hot, and it's not getting too cold. So now's kind of the time. So I'm going to set up the filtration again and need to put some fish. All right. So quickly, let's leave a, uh, I don't know, a cliffhanger of what you're building. The fish room. Yes. The fish shed. Um, which is right here. Right behind us. 
and it is still a work in progress. I want to make sure I do the infrastructure behind, you know, this big move right before. That was the challenge with putting up, adding tanks to the tent and then having to get behind it <laughs> and deal with, with the tubes and the plugs. So, so it's just in the starting phase. The starting We're going to film it all. We, I mean, like brand just starting. Still have to do electricity, plumbing. Yeah, we've got and, finally uh, an electricity plan and Bob's going to help me with the yep. design of the, the water exchange. I'm gonna play off of our, our lovely rainwater that we get here <laughs> and add some gutters and a, a rainwater system. So I'm not, I'm not gonna go too much into it. Okay. Just, that was just a little teaser a little so teaser. they come back. Right now it's still <laughs> full of stuff and empty tanks ready <laughs> to right. go up on shelves. So if you have any questions about keeping fish outside in the tubs, leave them down below and one of us will answer them I... and try to help you out as much as we can. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. <laughs>